in Jesus name we pray because of your prayers your friends and family receive mercy amen and father we thank you we thank you because you've answered our prayers thank you Jesus thank you for NLP battle we've lifted our voice as a unit and we're praying daily we thank you because every man of sickness from lameness madness deafness dumbness paralysis fibroid barrenness tumors cancers will be humbled at the name of jesus christ amen. every kind of delay and challenge will be resolved by the anointing amen we give you praise and glory hallelujah in jesus name we pray amen let me look at your neighbor and say i don't know about you but i have obtained mercy i don't know about you but i have obtained mercy God bless you, you can have your seat. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I have obtained mercy. I don't know about you, but I have obtained mercy. Remember that these are months of mercy, so we're doing something very different. So we're, we're starting a campaign, it's called 30 Days of Random Kindness. So what does that look like? On social media every day, I'm going to post something you should do to random kindness. Something as small as tomorrow when you go to the office buy someone lunch that cannot buy it back for you what does that mean the gate man you walk past all you need is to go to chicken republic a thousand five hundred buy two or three packs there are two or three of them at the gate and say i bless you with this praise the lord so throughout this week i'm going to tell you that look for 10 of your friends that you know that are not happy and send them a text message that encourages them it's going to be so wonderful well you know it's because it's going to be different Acts of kindness, different kind of. When you enter an Uber, give the Uber driver an extra two thousand dollars as tip. It's going to be wonderful. In you know, when you come on Sunday, every Sunday you come to church this year, you must bring a gift. And when you bring the gift, don't give it to me. Just put it under the chair next to you. So that when someone sits down and announce, look under the chair. They just see this envelope that has twenty thousand there. I'm like, oh wow, I, that can be an answer prayers to someone. Someone can see. A perfume there. Oh, wow. That came in a separate. Because, because the thing is that the country is hard, but we can make it easy. Yeah. Don't let's focus on what is hard. Let's make forward to make it easy. Like today now, I'm going to pick five people that, you know, you know I'm just going to ask you to go for lunch. Thank you, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just go for lunch. Just go for lunch. So, I'm not saying, you know, and, and every week we're going to do different, different things. Me, some of our leaders, we're going to go to supermarket, go to Aban or go to spa. And some of them, I'm dead to shop. I'm not dead to shop. I would just draw a messy circle. I just draw a circle and say, whatever fits into the circle is for free. Messy paid for it. But I'm only telling you because I want us to do it together. Some of you, all you have to do is to write, buy a card and write it. So I say, thank you. This month is a month of mercy. Remember what the Bible says. It says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Question, who, who do you need to go and spend time with in the hospital? Is it your aunt? Is it someone? Go and spend some time. So, it might be just spend five minutes with someone that you know that is sick. Buy food for someone. It can be as simple as buy 12 bottles of water and give to everyone in your office. Take some used clothes and give it to people that cannot afford clothes. Blessed are the merciful. And all of you that have children, when you're doing this, do it to your children. Let your children learn generosity and mercy. Your children always see you saying, go there, go there. They never see your generous heart. Let me When you bring your children to children's church next time, let your children bring something for another child. Bring them, give them a the bottle of pizza. When you go, give that pizza. And your child, the reason why is that every born is born selfish. That's the truth. There's no child that's not selfish. How do I know? When it's time to play with a toy. It's my toy. When they're not playing with a toy, they don't want it. But if another child plays with a toy, then that's the time they want it. Begin to teach your child mercy and generosity. On your social media, put some airtime there and put it there. And just say, give it away. Why? So every day this month, follow on social media with mercy. When you're coming to church, I can't know what church will be like because I'm bringing my own gift. I hope you. Every Sunday, I'm thinking of what I'm going to bring this Sunday. So today, it's five, five lunch for people. Praise the Lord. Blessed are the merciful for day. Some of you are praying, Father, I want mercy. It's very simple. Blessed are the merciful for day shall obtain mercy. Look at Easter Sunday. It should be big. We're just blessing people. And when the blessing gets it, 
sitting next to you, just look at their face and you see the joy and the beauty of sharing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, this Wednesday, we're fasting and praying. It's the first Wednesday of the month. We're having a corporate fasting and communion service. We're holding it right here. I'm holding all the centers. Make sure you are here. It will be very, very beautiful. You know, and yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're familiar with me, you know that this messy thing is something I do often. I would go to places and just bring food and, you know, bless people and, you know, that, that kind of thing. You know, my, my friend is over there. You know, yeah. When I met them, it's a group of, how many of you? 15 of you? 15 or 12? 15. I just, I was praying in the morning during COVID and I saw 15 guys and they were taking their bats on the streets. And I said, wow, I, I was just, it was just like a sight. Grown guys taking their bats on the street. And they said, we moved to Lagos, we don't have a place to sleep, sleep on the road. He said, so we just take our bats on the road also. And I said, there's COVID, so how do you eat? So every week or every month, I would go there and just give them stuff. I was able to get two or three or four of them jobs, and some of them are doing so well. They never even knew I was a pastor. They discovered sometime later, because it, the goal was not to invite them to church. It was just to be human. They never knew, and some of them now, um, what, 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 what do some of them do now? Yeah, what do they do? Tell me what they do. Where are they working? Yeah, tell me. What? He, you work in a boutique now, and it's a luxury, one of the top luxury boutique here. What about your other friends? What do they do? The one that has a girlfriend, what's his name now? What does he do? Personal, uh, what? He has his own personal boutique. He has his own boutique now. Oh, fantastic. You know, is that the one I gave money to go and learn driving? No. Not that one. Because one of them, I asked, okay, sometimes I can drive very well. I said, okay, maybe take another extra, give you money. I said, go and learn how to drive. Because when you learn how to drive, you'll get someone to employ you. Then you can feed off and stop living on the street. And, I mean, not everybody is resorted out. But that's, you will not know, but I'm just telling you this. This has happened. What did that mean to you guys? How many years ago was this? Like, three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. You know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, because it's not something you do and you're like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, no, no. Don't destroy your generosity by show off. Yeah. Sometimes we need to let people know what we do to inspire. So this is three years old. You know, stand, stand. Will you believe this guy was sleeping? Stand. Will you believe this guy was sleeping on the streets? They were taking their bath, not with boxers, stuck naked. You, it was a sight to behold. Praise God. Some of them are still here. It's not the only one. Some of them, I saw them in the other services. You know, there could be, it's a group of them. They all came from Port Harcourt together. Glory to God. Please, you can have your seats. All right. Amen. So, I, I hope, you know, I hope you realize that where you are is somebody's testimony. Amen. Amen. Please, if you have a free seat, give people, people are already outside for the next service and we still have about 25 minutes to go before the service is over. So if you have free seats, give people, release the seats. Don't, I know we always keep chairs because there's no space. All of you in the um, gallery, release the seats, please, so that we can just always do that. And ushers, if they want to come in, just let them come in quickly and fit and all of that. All right, let's turn our Bible to 2 Kings chapter 4. So it is our month of mercy. It's our month of mercy. One of the big things we're doing next month is that we're having this business Many of you heard about the personal transformation course. It was phenomenal. I mean, people came and I don't know if the person attended because if you attended, people were just in tears. So like, I've been doing business. I, my life is changing two days. I never knew that something can change my life like this. It was really powerful. But we're having something. This was just to challenge you to become a disciple and to grow. But one of the big things we're also doing is the business acceleration course. And it's designed for people that want to grow in their business. Yes, it's a paid program. Because we're using an exclusive venue, you know, that's it. It's, um, I, I think there's one registration that's 200,000 and there's a mini registration that's 100,000, something like that. And you can pay, you can pay in bits, you can pay in bits, you can pay small, small. Why am I doing this? Number one, because a lot of business people need encouragement and knowledge. That's the first thing. But the second thing is that there's a fund between 25 to 50 million naira that all the entrepreneurs have the opportunity to get. Because you're going to sit down with people that want to invest money and they will just sit down with you, give you 10 million and all of those kind of things. And so, so why do you do this? The reason why I do this is that we are humans. Humans have human problems. 
there are things that prayer will solve. But someone's pray, answered prayer is what you can do. So why make them fast and pray when you can do it? Why make them fast and pray when you can do it? So this is what we're doing right now. This is what we're doing right now. We're putting this, you know, we're putting all of this here. And um, all you have to do is to register, you know, and it's going to hold in one of the best hotels. I think it's either a hotel or Four Points. You know, it's a very expensive. Someone says, why are we charging so much? We want to help people. Number one, we don't want wrong people. Number two, the environment. The environment is there. Then the class of who you get to meet. So if you run a business and want to start a business, this is for you. Go ahead and register. Take a snapshot. Click on the link and go ahead and register. Glory to God. Once the class is full, the class is full. You will not be able to get the business funded once the class is full. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sec and if you are interested in giving people business funding, it's not a gift. It's you investing in their business and they'll get, they'll get returns as their business grows. Then you should kind of reach us also because that's something we want you to also do. Hallelujah. So go ahead. Take out, take out your phones quickly and uh, go ahead. and All of you online, take out your phones quickly. Yes, this course, we had so many people from outside Lagos, people from Canada, from the US, from the UK that attended. I was really blessed because I was like, how are they attending the course in Nigeria that is day? Meanwhile, in, the, in, in Canada, it's night time. You know, and one lady was telling her story about how she does $200,000 in sales in a fashion business and she wants to scale. Very powerful story from Canada and how the course really helped her to find a pathway. Amen. All right, so let's go. Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. I spent a lot of the time praying and explaining things, so it's a short message today. And for next week, we'll come fully. Hallelujah. So today... <laughs> we're starting a new series on our finances. And someone says, why does a church teach about finances? Churches always teach about money. Well, it depends on why they teach about money. We're not teaching about money to get money from you. I'm teaching about money for one reason. When I get all the prayer requests, the number one prayer request I get is funding and money. And I think that it's time we stop running away from this. We have to teach about it. And the second reason I'm teaching about this is that the teaching in the church has been very poor when it comes to finance. Because all the teaching that you see available is that give and God will bless you. And as much as that is powerful and true, it's an incomplete truth. Because prayer and giving alone will not make you experience wealth and riches. There are things you have to do as a person. For example, the Bible says that whatsoever it doeth shall what? Prosper. What does that mean? If you are not doing anything, there's nothing God can prosper. I don't know if you heard me. If you're not doing anything, there's nothing God can prosper. Because sometimes I get very sick and tired of churches that the only thing they teach is give and give and give and give. And the reason why is this. When they keep giving, they don't have. What are they going to give from? And some people say, take a loan to give. That's crazy. In the scripture, giving is based on what you have, not what you do not have. So when we teach on finances, it's very powerful. And, and we're, I'm going to learn from you, are going to learn from you, we're going to look at the word of God together. You know, do you have the picture that we use as a flyer? Do you have the picture? I want to show you. Because this picture is a typical Lagos, is a typical person, is, a, is sometimes the typical person that you know. I don't know if you have the picture. I want to show you the flyer. It's a very good flyer. I, sh I think you should share it even though the series is not, is not over yet. I don't even have it. Glory to God. Second Kings chapter 4. Do you have it? I'm trying to see if they can get it for me at the back. Look at the, the, the picture. Salary 300k. Girlfriend allowance 200k. Rent 2 million. Mom medical bills 200k. Loan repayment 500k. This guy is not stable. But, all of us, but that's how many people are. And with the introduction of this loan companies that are destroying your finances you need to ask yourself when you take a loan you need to ask yourself something every time you take a loan to buy liabilities to buy airtime to buy phone to buy what's not bring your money you have lost a lot of money and they will tell them hey, just take 100,000 you just pay back what do you pay back Let's say we pay that 10000 at the end of the month. Do you know the percentage of return that is? Do you know how many of your life you need to work to get 10000 You as a person, every month you earn 100000 How much do you make in a day? You work for 20 days. You earn 100000 Divide it for me. 5000 per day. So, two days. Monday and Tuesday you go to work. You earn 10000 
Someone else says, for borrowing you 100,000, give me two days of your life. But because it looks like small money to you, you make those terrible decisions. Write this down. The bad financial choices of today reflects tomorrow. Write it somewhere. And I'm not talking about personal finances also. I'm talking about people that run businesses. The bad financial choices of today will reflect tomorrow. So, your financial condition of today is a function of what happened yesterday. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You need to pray for my voice. We still have one more service to go. So, 2 Kings 4 verse 1. So, what I'm teaching about in this series is closing the financial gap. In this series, you're going to learn, number one, what mindset that affected me. For example, when you see the picture of that guy, the guy has a mindset problem. Number one, if you live above your income, there's something wrong with the way you think. Why do people live above their income? They want to show who they are not. It's a simple thing. The people that show the biggest wealth are the poorest. Some of you, if you go and see the richest man in Africa, which is Zangote, literally you could dress more expensive than him. There are some of the richest in that country. They just went white native. And they wear shoes. Maybe what is expensive is a wristwatch. But you? Ah. It has to blink. The name has to be heavy. It has to be LV. Louis. It's okay if you can afford it, but why borrow if you cannot afford it? So they look at your glasses. Gucci. They look at your watch. Rolex. They look at your bed. LV. Your suit, Amani, the type Prada. How much your bank account? Zero. <laughs> one time, one lady came to me and said, Pastor, I just need money for I need capital in my business. As she just came, I just looked at the back of my table. It was an LV bag. I looked at the shoe. It was an LV shoe. I looked at the glasses. I said, yeah, I said, how much is capital? If I can even get like two million to start with. I said, you have it. He said, where, sir? I said, all this thing on your body, is it not the capital? <laughs> it is a capital. Can I be honest with you? Some of you at your level, you have no business entering cabs. I'm telling you. Have you checked how much you spend on carbs? When carb is taking 50% of your income, do you work for Uber? <laughs> Praise God. Someone says, Pastor, can you say that? That's so insensitive. The reason why is that when I was growing up, I went through the phase. When I bought shoe, I put soap protector. The reason why I used to walk. That time our church, I mean, the Pagada church was there. So, you know, I used to do a lot of spiritual work in Unilag. So I would just walk from Unilag gate. Sharp! Walk to Unilag. And I turned into prayer walk. So as I'm walking, I'm building my spirit, man. Some of you don't have financial problems. You're the one that is putting yourself under financial pressure. Then when we finish service in spoon feed us those days, they will say, what do you want to eat? They say, rice and chicken. I say, me, rice and chicken. I could not even have, they say, our church was in an eatery. I could not eat the eatery's food. Because, listen to this, life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Know your size and live your size part time. Then you will have no pressure. Know your size and live your size part time. So when we finish service, Bagada, pa. My parents' house that I was staying in Isola, I used to in Antonio in Solo, but Solo was the major place. I'll just look at the money; it cannot carry me that way. Hmm. I had to discuss shortcuts. So when she just cross Bagada Bridge, you enter Shomolu. If you enter Shomolu, just walk through some corners like this. You get to Jibowu. You know how you get to there. If you know what I'm talking about, let me see. Hey, you know the road, Abby. 
Eh, because you've done it before. You know, because it's just, you just enter. Once you enter from land, I will, I will look on. Just enter. Bass. You just enter like bang, 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 bang. Sharp. You're in Jibo. From Jibo, you just cross over. You've entered Moshe Lassa. What? It's far. Sometimes you have to walk for wisdom to enter. Praise God. That's the truth. Some of you, too much comfort has not allowed you to develop. That's the truth. Too much comfort has not allowed you to develop. And someone says, how can I be ashamed of it? The pain was part of God's process for developing me. Have you not seen people that have no job that want to go on vacation? May you not have visions that will swallow your destiny. He said, I'm, the girl has no job. I'm just, this Lagos stress is too much. If I can just go on vacation. Yeah, if I can just go on vacation. You now say you're tempted. You are the one that is tempting yourself. Because when you have no money, you're doing vacation. Satan will bring you someone that will take you on vacation to sleep with you. Uh, whoa. Praise God. One time, we, myself and one of our leaders, um, Taiwan Nolaja, went to a suit store. He said the story many times. So it was, he had told me that some of the suits I used to preach, that they are not contemporary, that, you know, because this was the early days. So I used to have just two suits. I would just match them, match them, match them. I said, Pastor, no matter how much you match them, we know the suits. <laughs> so we went to this suit. So it was on Allen. Allen was the like premium place that time. I don't know if it's still like that now. So we went to Allen. So what, I, I said, what one suit? Three piece. It was light brown. This thing just marked me. Bah! Ah, that was a pastor. This, I, I, I saw it in the mirror. I said, pastor, this is your size. I said, that's good. I removed it. When I went, I said, how much this suit? When they set the price, I said, it's not my size. <laughs> Tower looked at me because he thought, pastor, why are you lying? He said, but you go. I said, there are two kinds of sizes. There's physical size. There's financial size. I said, it's my physical size, but it's what? Not my financial size. What kind of life makes you buy credit on credit? What kind of life makes you buy credit on credit? If nobody will advise yourself, you can't talk to yourself that you're on the path of financial destruction. Even angels know you're owing. They will not start sending texts to people. They, they will not use your name. Lapo has HIV. Avoid her. And it's people that you owe. Someone say hallelujah. Say I will make adjustments. As you are here right now, you mean God cannot say so 10,000. Why will you so? Any money that comes, death is waiting for it. I don't do beyond what I can do. You know me very, I don't. I don't prove to be who I am not. So I humble myself so that God can exalt me. The only car you have, if they break the lights, you cannot fix it. <laughs> Praise God. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says this, And they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest my servant did fear the Lord. And this is why I'm teaching this. Yale, I wish you can ex help me explain that. This is why I'm teaching this is this. When Christians eventually have financial issues, they feel as if God has forsaken them. You could hear the tone in her voice. She was crying. She was emotional. I said, what is it? I, I tightened, I gave, I prayed. I did next level. But 
We are in debt. And since Sailor as a pastor, when you hear the story, there's a lot of emotion, but you can see the gaps. They feel, that's why on social media, a lot of people are angry against God. Only that they cannot tell is God they're angry at. So it's even of God they take it out on. You know when you cannot see God? Or be angry to God. You see his men, you deal with them. And the reason is this. Because they feel as if we fear the Lord, we did everything, how did our life turn out better financially? Pastor, did you come? I've done this before, I'll do it again to help you understand. Pastor, go to the back. This will change, this alone will change your perspective to finances if you get this. Walk to me. Was that easy? Yes, that was easy. Go backwards. Stay on one foot and come to me. Uh huh. It's taking some time. It's slower. Was that easy? No, sir. The problem with finances for Christians is this. You don't realize that there are two legs to finances. There's a supernatural leg that is prayer, confession, fasting, giving. There's another leg that is value creation, policy thinking, product development, work. So most Christians are working on one leg in their finances. That's why they are shaking. Go back and walk. Go back and walk. Go back on. See why they are shaking. They are walking on leg of prayer. Yeah, they're walking. You see? You see? You see? Boogie, boogie, boogie. They are panting. They are panting. They are panting. They are panting. They can't balance. The question is that what leg are you working on in your finances? There are two legs. The supernatural leg. And what? The natural leg. As I wake up in the morning, man, take a plush kapaya, pray for NLP. Then I go and there's something to do. That's why when you join in the prayer, we pray responsible prayers. Have you noticed? You don't hear me say, oh yeah, take money. Oh yeah, receive money. How? <laughs> will it jump from hell and come into your hand? What will I say? You are going to pray. That God will show you profitable opportunities. Because the prayer makes you take responsibility. Stop praying prayers that makes you irresponsible. Anyhow you do it, Lord, shall bless me. What's anyhow? Is that not why people go and take bribe and say it's a blessing? Is that why people sleep around and say it's a blessing? There are two legs to finances. There is a, there is a spiritual leg. And there's a natural leg. You know, I'm saying so because some of you, you're very strong on the spiritual leg. And what you have to get is the what? Natural leg. And some of you are very strong on the natural leg. What you do, I'm not going to say what, is a spiritual leg. Thank you, sir. And that's what this teaching is going to, this teaching is going to teach you what you have to do spiritually and what you have to do what? Naturally. God doesn't give cash. He gives power to get wealth. Let's read in the Bible. Determine chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. See what the Bible says. Can we read together? I want to go. I want us to read together. I want to go. Can we read as if we are alive and strong? I give and hear that yes. Yes or no? Yes. Want to go. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power. Does he give you wealth or gives you power to get wealth? Power is the word ability. It enables you with ideas, with concepts, with what? With knowledge to get wealth. So every time you're praying for wealth, what God is giving you is the power to get wealth. How does the power to what comes? It comes in ideas. It comes in relationships. It comes in wisdom. This is why we miss it. Because you see, God, why are you looking at me like this? And God says, I've given the power to get wealth. So the question is that, what are the ideas that God has given you to get money that you have not said it's working on? Get the microphone. Let's ask them. What ideas have God given you to create wealth that you have not begun to work on? If you have some ideas already, raise up your hands. 
And if you have made money from your idea, what idea did God give you that brought you money? That what you're going to do, you were afraid, you didn't think it was great, but brought you money. Yeah. Ola, you want to say something? Yeah, give, give, give. What idea did God give you? Where's the microphone? Give it to him. Yeah. Give it to him. Yeah. What idea did God give you that helped you in business? Go, yeah, give it the microphone. Just give it to him. That you. Yeah. <laughs> when you were a student, what did you do? Please, you need to hurry, Ola, please. Thank you. Many things. Many things. One. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Fantastic. McDonald's. What? McDonald's. You went to work in McDonald's. What else did you do? Postman. Postman. At some point, you were selling clothes. Did you sell clothes or wristwatches? I sold clothes to small. You sold clothes and wristwatches. Because you're a man of style. Look at him. He, he knows style. So we're like, okay, I have the ability to be able to pick the right clothes. Then all of it, I don't know how to wear clothes. He'll come and what? Sell it to you. Look, look at the glasses. Did you sell glasses? Focus on the glasses. Did you sell glasses too? Microphone or quite quickly. Did you sell glasses? Stay on him because he needs to answer me or else I will not go. Did you sell glasses? I use the microphone. Small. <laughs> and you know in life, you know in life, he that is faithful in little, before him much. Now, he, he, he runs a business, and I, I mean, I've been to his office to pray about their new office, and I see many staffs working with him. But it didn't come from many staff. It started by selling glass. This business that you need 50 million to start, are you sure it's not a trap? Because any business you want to start, you can start with a smaller vision. Praise God. I said, praise God. At some point in my life, I was selling furniture and I was a pastor. I was selling furniture. I sold to state government, I sold to banks. I was a pastor. What have I not sold? I've sold shirts. I've sold Christian books. I've sold furniture. The reason why is that I would rather do that than beg. And I know that people do extreme things because they need money. Very extreme. I don't know if you watched the video three Sundays ago in the fourth service. As we're talking, a lady ran out because one lady was talking about how she had challenges and how the message helped her. And then I ran and hugged her. He said, thank you for letting me know that I have hope. And I said, what's your story? He said, my parents need 500000 to pay for their rent. He said, this lady just encouraged me that I don't have to do the wrong thing. I said, what wrong are you planning to do? He said, I was planning to go and sleep with someone tomorrow to get the 500000 to pay the rent. Ah! <gasps> But that's a normal story. It just touched me with that. <gasps> because we love hypocrisy, right? <gasps> praise God. I said, praise God. So, the first reason is this. Why am I stuck financially? That's the first reason. Why am I stuck financially? I wanted to see something here. Let's, let's learn from this widow woman. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet and said to Elisha, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest my servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born, born men. And Elijah just said to her, What shall I do for you? And he did not notice she had no answer. One of the reasons people are stuck financially is that there is no financial clarity or goal. Let me ask you a question. Is there a place you've written what your financial goal is this year? A lot of people don't have what their financial goal is this year. And once you don't have a goal, there's nothing to walk towards. The Bible says where there is no vision, what happens? The people perish. Once there's no vision, the people perish. The second thing I wanted to see is this. He says, what shall I do for you? The woman had no answer. The second thing he says, he said, tell me what you have. And, and that's very powerful. He said, tell me what you have. The first question was about the goals. The reason, second reason people are stuck is this, the mentality. The mentality. Because there's a scarcity mentality and there's an abundance mentality. See what the Bible says here. He says that, he says that tell me what you have. And the woman said, thy servant has what? Nothing. Why? scarcity mentality 
always focus on what they do not have. This is how you hear it. If I had money, if I knew people, if I was abroad, if I was living in Lagos, if I was, if I was, leave it, you are not. Where you are, there's opportunity. Look for it. Scarcity mentality is always focusing on what is not available. So when you find yourself focused on what's not available, remind yourself of falling into what? Scarcity mentality. See what? He says, what do you have? And she obviously had something, but there's a way scarcity doesn't help you see it. The question is that, what mentality are you, do you have today that is blocking your finance? Look at that guy that earns 300,000 naira and has girlfriend allowance for 200,000 naira. What will make a responsible human being think that I have loan? What kind of girlfriend are you dating? That you have to sustain now with 60% of a salary. Someone says love is stupidity. How do I know if your brother do, if your brother does it, will you encourage him? If your brother, if your brother does does something, will you encourage him? If you are the girl receiving it, you will see nothing bad in it all. But if the person is your father or your brother, it's going to be a problem. Some of you girls are dating people, you need to encourage them to be intelligent. In fact, they'll be like, ah, your own case is different, so why do you talk like this? You know, like, you know, they'll be different. When I said preaching, there's this guy known now called Ouch. Ouch was not, because he was in our church, he was playing the bass guitar. Ouch used to sew shirts. He used to sew. He was my tailor. He used to sew the shirts. Two five. If I have one of his shirts, I kept it just for the future. I said, as your brand goes bigger, I'm going to sell this shirt for very big money. So that you can see one of your premium shirts that you, were, you made yourselves those days. But look at the one. It was a mentality. The question is that what mentality is? How is your mentality keeping you down financially? And this is how it keeps you down financially. Because you have scarcity mentality, you say things like, it will not work, it will not work, then you do nothing. What are, the, what are some mentalities that people have that affects them financially? I'll give you some examples. Number one, there's nobody that will help me. Who said that? That's what you think. So I say, I've spoken to a lot of, okay, who thinks that way? Wave your, wave your hands, let me see. Yeah, give her the microphone. Just give her the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. The two of them are friends. They sit down together. They think together. They sit down together. Yeah. Give her the microphone. Yeah. Give her the microphone. Yeah. Take the microphone. So you think nobody was going to help you? Oh, that's fine. Give it to your friends also. So you think nobody's going to help you? Mm-hmm. What's, what, what's, is that how you ask also? Mm-hmm? Okay, let me ask you a question. Why do you think so? I mean, probably ask for help. Well, when I wanted to start my business, I was trying to raise about three or four million. And yeah, nobody was there to help you. Yeah, and someone made this thing. No, 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 don't worry. Don't worry about what they okay. made. Nobody was there to help you, yeah? Yeah. How many people did you ask? Maybe like five. Well, those listen, are the people financially stable around me. Listen, now. all the businessmen men are lying are laughing because people in business know for you to get funding. Maybe you need to ask about 20 people to get a yes. Well. But doesn't it depend on people you know? But you attend this church. Are you not in a cell? I just joined. You don't go to cell. I, I just joined. I just you just joined. joined. But yeah. the way you were before. Because look at the verse 2. Look at verse 2. I want to look at verse 2. Because you are like this woman, oh, you will see her. You, you, also, you are from the same mother. You will see her. Look, look, see. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. Look at, it. look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. Can you have verse 2 on the screen now? Read, my sister, your microphone. Read for me. Please, can you put verse 2 on the screen? DJ. 2 Kings, and they're always quick to remove it, but to put it back is always a challenge. Okay, you have a Bible with you? Read from your Bible. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. Hope you know she didn't say 5. You say around 5, which means there are 3 or 2. 
2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2. Yes. Yeah. And Elisha said unto her, uh-huh. What shall I do for thee? Uh-huh. Tell me. Yeah. What art thou in, your, in the house? And she said, yeah. Thy handmaid had not anything in the house. Okay. Save a pot of oil. Continue. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad. Did you see the other resource that she had that Elijah pointed out to? He said, There are relationships in your life you can borrow from. Go and connect to them. Go and connect to them. He says, he says, go borrow vessels from your neighbors. Question, this church is a resource to you if you can join a cell. I'm telling you, I mean, you know, I lead a cell and they were saying within the cell, some people have done transaction of almost two or three billion within themselves. Because you're the one that thinks you don't. So that's why I asked. I said, the way I know around me are the people that I ask. I said, but you attend the church. And let me say this to you. The reason why she never got help was this. That mentality that there's no one to help me. You don't know why? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So once you say there's no one to help me, you will not see the people around you that can help you. The people you will see are the people that are not willing to help you. And once they don't help you, you now experience what they call the law of self-fulfilling prophecy. That uh, I thought so, and it didn't happen. It's called the law of what? Self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly what you thought happened to you that way. There are a lot of people to help me. I thought you would say, there are a lot of people to help me. A lot! So the question you want to ask yourself is this. What mindset do I have that is holding back my finance? So my sister, your mindset is that there's no one to help you. What should your mindset be right now? I have help. Exactly. I have obtained help. You, oh my God, you're so brilliant. You have what? Obtained help. Do you know by this conversation alone, some people are going to come to meet out their service. What exactly do you do that can invest in? Tell me what you think. I make shoes. No, no, no. What do you think? Do you think some people come and meet you and ask you? Do you think so? Yeah. Exactly. Because you have what? Help. Because I know I have help. I begin to call it. I begin to receive it. I have help. Uh, can I talk to the ladies? Ladies, don't take this personal. Don't take this personal. The mindset that nobody can help you that's sleeping with you. That's why you attract people that will sleep with you to help you. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have to do without that kind of mindset so that you can begin to accept helps without sinful attachment to it. How many ladies have been helped and it was not sinful? Raise up your hands, let me see. Raise up your hands, let me see. Look at all your hands up. You, you can't be the only one that will not receive favor from God. You are not that terrible, are you? Praise God. So the last thing I will say is this. Someone says, so how do I increase my income? The first thing is to solve problems. Money is a reward for those that solve problems. That's the last thing I'm saying and I close. Money is what? A reward for those that solve problems. What problem do you need to solve? Go to the car park. Sir, I notice your car is very dirty. Do you mind me coming to the house or coming to your office and wash it for you every day? If that's your level, you just solve the problem. Ma, I noticed that you are, you are quite busy. Do you mind me going to the market to shop for you and come? Ah, Mr. Shilfakori, I, I noticed that you like star. Do you mind me shopping for you in London and bringing it back to you? Those are problems. The question is that what problem can you solve? That someone can pay for. Someone says, and if you run a company, how will you increase the value of your company? By solving bigger problems of your customers. Oh, our company builds. But we can solve more problems. When people build, they're looking for furnitures, they're looking for this. We also can solve that problem for you. We create another avenue and make more money there. So people buy and they want to sell later. Oh, you can sell back to us and we'll sell it for you again. So you grow that capacity by solving 
problems. How many of you problems are coming to your head right now? Don't run away from problems. The reward of problems is what? Money. David became a national hero not because he prayed, because he solved what? A national problem. Look for some big problem and solve it, and you'll be on your way to stardom and greatness. I see you going far. I said, I see you going far. Can I tell you what I believe? Very soon, when you say you are broke, there will be 100 million in your accounts. That will be your broke. You say, I'm broke. It will be 100 million. Anything that less than 100 million is broke. If, if the one I'm talking to say, I receive it. Very soon, when you say you are paying tight, it will be 50 million you are paying. You know. Very soon, when you are paying staff salary per month, 250 million. Staff salary, 250 million. The amen has begun to reduce. Praise God. Stand up and let us pray.